All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning. You're listening to the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 1st of October. There's a bunch of updates on the economy, so let's take them one by one. India's core infrastructure industries output contracted for the first time in more than four years in August, reflecting weak demand in the economy. The index of eight core infrastructure industries, which comprises output of coal, crude oil, cement and electricity, among others, fell 0.5% in August. It had last declined in April of 2015. Now, India's fiscal deficit widened marginally in August over the previous month. The gap rose to 5.53 lakh crore as of the end of August, which is 78.7% of the budgeted estimate for the full year. In July, the deficit stood at 77.8% of the target. Economists are watching this figure closely, especially considering the measures that the government has announced recently to bolster the economy, including the corporate tax rate cut, will result in lower revenue collection. And the way to breach that fiscal deficit is, of course, market borrowing. But the government has maintained its borrowing plan for the second half of 2019-20. Economic Affairs Secretary Atanu Chakraborty told reporters in Delhi on Monday that the government will borrow 2.68 lakh crore rupees in the October to March period in 17 weekly auctions. The size of weekly borrowings will be 16,000 crore rupees with the last two auctions of 14,000 crore rupees spread over four to five maturity buckets. Moving on. India's current account deficit widened in the April to June quarter when compared to the previous three months but remained within comfortable limits. The current account gap in the first quarter of the current financial year stood at $14.3 billion or 2% of the GDP. The IMD said yesterday that the monsoon season had officially come to an end. It was above normal and, in fact, apparently this year's monsoon had the highest recorded rainfall since 1994. Despite the end of the season, the monsoon still remains active over several parts of the country, with the IMD saying it could be the longest recorded delayed withdrawal of the rain-bearing winds. The Mumbai police yesterday filed a case against the former bank management of Punjab and Maharashtra Cooperative Bank and the promoters of Housing Development and Infrastructure Limited or HDIL. The case registered was one of forgery, cheating and criminal conspiracy. The RBI, remember, placed restrictions on cash withdrawals from the bank, something that has caused a great deal of anguish for retail depositors. Do read up on that story on the website bloomberquint.com. India's oil ministry has cut the price of locally produced natural gas, the first reduction after four straight hikes since October of last year. The price of gas produced from domestic fields has been cut to 3.23 per metric million British thermal unit from $3.69 per MMBTU, according to the ministry's petroleum planning and analysis cell. The new price will be effective from the 1st of October, that is today, till March of 2020. And speaking about oil and gas, Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has warned that a war between his country and Iran would lead to a total collapse of the global economy. Tensions between the countries separated by the Persian Gulf have come close to boiling point in the wake of the attack on Saudi Aramco facilities that the international community is blaming on Iran despite Tehran's denial of responsibility. In the U.S., Donald Trump's personal lawyer Rudy Giuliani, his Secretary of State Michael Pompeo and Attorney General William Barr were all drawn deeper into the House impeachment inquiry after new details of the administration's foreign contacts emerged on Monday, that is yesterday, according to Bloomberg. 
Three House committees have said that they had subpoenaed Giuliani for records of his dealing with uh, Ukraine on Trump's behalf. And Pompeo was among those listening to the 25th of July phone call between Trump and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, according to a person familiar with the matter. That conversation is central to the impeachment investigation. In international markets, U.S. stocks ended higher and the three early rises in Asia are all positive at this point. So the cues for the Indian markets are positive. I'll let Darshan Mehta, the head of research here at Bloomberg Quint, tell you all about that. Good morning, Darshan. How's the market looking this morning? Hi, Alex. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Global queues are decent at this point of time. The SDX Nifty is indicating a positive outlook, but lots of stocks to watch. First of all, Reliance Industries Aramco has confirmed and reassured that supplies for October will be maintained post the blast that happened at their refinery. ONGC and Oil India probably may react negatively. The government sets natural gas prices for the second half down 12.5% at $3.23 per MMBTU. Natural gas prices for difficult fields are set down almost 10%. Cadla Healthcare will sell its rights, title and interest in Zypitamag to Medicure. The upfront payment that Cadla will receive will be $5 million and deferred payment of $2 million over the next four years. Macquarie says they are a tad disappointed by the quantum of the payout to Cadla. Hutamaki BPL, they will acquire Mohan Muta's Polytech business of flexible packaging for 80 crores. The acquisition will be funded by debt and expected to be closed in by the quarter of December 2019. This will give them a foothold in the southern markets. NBCC signs an MOU with the government for development of National Sports University at Imphal for 400 crores. In terms of bulk deals, Rekha Rakesh Junjunwala acquired 19.6 lakh shares in Tata Communication. Amanza holding was the seller in the bulk deal and remember the the circuit limit for Tata Communication is also now 20%. What is trading is the pure play telecom business and the real estate business has been hived off and probably will be listed at a later date. In Fibim Avenues, the promoter sold in 36 lakh shares in the company and Wheels India, the promoter sold in 10.4% stake in the company. ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund, Sundaram Finance Holdings and IDFC Sterling Value Fund are the buyers. In terms of some of the brokerages, Macquarie has raised Britannia target to 2518 from the earlier 2279, but they still maintain and underperform. HSBC upgrades Bharat Forge and Cummins India to a buy, and LNT is the top pick in the industrial. And finally, Bank of America Merrill Lynch cuts Cummins India's target to 607 from the earlier 669, maintaining an underperform rating. But there's much more you need to know before trade actually starts. For that, log on to our website bloombergquin.com and click on the All You Need to Know tab and you will be prepared for morning trade. Thanks, Darshan. Well, that's all we have for you in this podcast. But as always, there's a lot more on the website, bloombergquint.com. So do check it out. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoy listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.